Okay, we're back. We're live. Interesting lineup today, Community Matters. And we have uh, another one of our hosts, uh, Marcia Joyner. She's the host of Navigating the Journey, and which actually is, is that, that yeah, today? Right. That happened that earlier today. today. Yeah. And we, we have Keone Dudley, who is a uh, PhD in philosophy. I always admire people, people with PhDs in philosophy. I consider them, <laughs> you know, special thinkers. Yeah, you know? Good, yeah. good, good. And uh, he's a retired educator, and he was part and parcel of the play. And the play is what we're here to talk about. Yes. The play yesterday, and Marsha and, and uh, Keone and me, we were all there, and um, we, we, we learned some stuff, or, or we taught some stuff, as the case may be. So, Marsha, why don't you lead off and say what, what it was all about. Okay, while the Americans were celebrating the Independence Day, July 4th. Let me footnote that. Is this was done on, a first of, on, on July 4th, which is the National Independence Day, and there's, you know, there's definitely an activist tone to that. Well, we, don't, we don't show the American flag. We don't get excited about Independence Day. We do what? <laughs> Overta overthrow Day. Uh, no, no, this was, this was the day they sealed the, de the, the deal. Um, so while the Americans, because it was planned, while the Americans were celebrating 1776 and whatnot, the provisional government planned this taking the oath this is back of in 1893 1894 yeah. when they after their constitutional convention to put this thing together they decided that at 830 on the July 4 1894 at the exact minute that the ships in the harbor would toot their whistles to celebrate the 4th of July they would swear themselves in as the Republic of Hawaii. Oh, so there was a, a historical significance so they, they set it to up doing the play, the Ilani Palace, on, on July 4th. Exactly where they took the oath of office. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And I kept thinking that it was on the same ground, the same, same steps, place. the same places, to the foot, to the, the same yes. place. And, and so, uh, for our audience, I'm, I was the producer, so see, I don't look like one of the, the guys that stood there and took the oath of office. But these two did. They were the bad guys. Yeah, we had booze for our <laughs> efforts, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they booed you don't, more, Keon. Don't we have a picture of these two <laughs> on the steps? Hopefully we do. I know we do. Because you all look good being the bad guys standing there taking an oath of office. And I, I told you it was like the opera Tosca. Yeah. T Tosca, this one character called Scarpio, mm -hmm. and Scarpio was a terrible villain, you know. And at the end, traditionally, for the last 150 years, when anybody plays uh, Scarpio in, in Tosca, the audience boos him. And the better a player he is, the more they <laughs> boo him for being mean and a villain person. <laughs> well, so, the boos, as they were introduced... As the Honorable James Blaine and the Honorable everybody was the Honorable somebody, somebody rather, rather, yes <laughs> the Honorable W O Castle the audience would boo his he's not Honorable boo 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 <laughs> and as the the plot unfolded the audience was just wild oh they got very excited at the yes. end. So, and we weren't alone here, Keone and me. No, there was there a Peter no. Carlyle stood next to me and Roger Epstein. And who else? You had a, Jeff, a number. Jeff Pompadour, just great. He people. was very good. Yeah, yeah. There we are. There we are. Oh, there's a picture that's, of that's, us. Yeah. yeah. That now was you, quite something. Only yesterday, only in front yesterday. of the Iolani Palace. Yeah. Um, there oh, is, that's me. Yeah, oh. The Honorable James G. Blaine. See, that's yeah. your name there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the fellow in the orange shirt was drafted. Uh, it was drafted spot. at the last minute because the person. <laughs> he was very gracious he about was, it. He was. He was. But he had a great accent. Too bad we didn't have him dressed up because he had this great accent. And let, oh, now here. This is real. In the book, this, this one. Yeah, we'll talk about the book. Then we'll book. talk about the book. Yeah. It says that the men, the, the provisional government, once they declared themselves that Thurston steps from behind Dole, takes the Hawaiian flag down, and cuts it up into two by three strips and handed it to the descendants of the provisional government. So as we see, Peter Carlisle, who will never be able to run again, <laughs> I told him once that. I see them cutting the you flag. You got plenty of booze yeah, for what he did. Yeah. Well, can we, got, we have some more of them cutting the flag. Yeah, there we are. 
You he see? cut the flag in, in and, little yeah. pieces. And, and, and every would, time he cut it in little pieces, the crowd, crowd was really reacting yes. emotionally about this. Yes, they were. And even you see the young man standing in the back, his teeth are, and, and Peter kept looking at me like, you know, he w didn't want to do it, even though it's paper. You know, it's, <laughs> but we made it to cut. <laughs> you know, he didn't want to do it. But the crowd went wild. And they were, they were uh, lying prostrate on the pavement. They were oh, crying, the, crying, the, crying and, and, and chanting. Very music. emotional chanting. It was interesting. And I mean, it, has a, it has a place historically. And it has a place, you know, in modern times. But, it, you know, to me, uh, certainly, is, you know, it's a big issue now in Hawaii. But to me, the most interesting part of it was the material that came out of uh, Tom Kaufman's book, was it Nation Within? Nation Within, yeah. Uh, the detail about how these guys took over a country. <laughs> they took the whole country in one fell swoop. That's impressive. And they, they had to deceive a lot of people, had to play a lot of politics and, and um, you know, intrigue, lots of intrigue going on. Oh, my goodness, yes. And what we got with Nation Within uh, is that they kept such good records Amazing. Mm. They didn't didn't shred their records. And Tom researched all that. And Tom that. spent months. He's in a research. journalist, so he was going to dig and find the detail. Yeah. So everything that I wrote, everything you said, came out of the, what their actual conversation was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we're lucky we have the benefit of that. We're lucky we have Tom's book, but we also have a book from Kearney. What did yeah. you write now, oh, Kearney? It, it's uh, actually nineteen ninety. Um, oh, you were ahead of your time in a way, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now I call for Hawaiian sovereignty. Um, it, uh, it's no longer in print, but I, I do plan on redoing the, let, the ending of it, uh, mm -hmm. bringing it up to date, and mm -hmm. getting it out hopefully this year. Do you ahead. talk about the overthrow in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Now, yeah. When we did the original street play in 1993, Keone was a part of us. Yeah. We started in 1991 with Dallas Vogler had this script about the overthrow with all the details, all the players, and none of us knew, especially me, this was all new history. They were a little bit more up to it. And I was working at Hawaii Public Radio. They gave us 15 hours of nonstop broadcast as a you were there. So we got to watch the unfolding of all of this. It's very interesting. So we oh. we reenacted, reenacted on the day mm -hmm. that it a uh, hundred years later, uh, on the day that something happened, we we did it at the time that it that it took place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we had this big gathering at the palace uh, on the the actual day of the overthrow, and. Um, Reenacted that whole thing. Oh, 94, 2009, uh, 93. 1994. 93. 93. Yeah. So you were just uh, how many hundred years yeah. after? Yeah, we, it was the 200th done, yeah. anniversary. It, 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 it was. 100th 100. anniversary, yeah. So for me, you know, we're live, right? And I'm saying my battery is going, and we didn't have this. Smartphone, so I said it on the air, telling Hawaii Public Radio, and people came from everywhere with car batteries, flashlight batteries, batteries of every kind. That's when I knew we had an audience. <laughs> so we said we had with Dallas. We said if we get five hundred people, we've done a good job. By the end, we had what ten, twelve thousand. Oh yeah, yeah. People well, came from everywhere. You, you wonder who the audience is. You know, like me, I'm not an activist. Sorry, you guys. You can be activists. It's okay. But I'm not an activist. Well, I'm very curious, and I like to put things in perspective historically. You know, frequently we have history shows where we try to figure out the continuum, you know, how you got to this right. point, this turning point, and what happened after this turning point. And that's what was really interesting to me yesterday. So you have a paragraph you want to read. You try to get into the script that was in play yesterday. This is Mr. Dutt. To this explain. Is this is... This one, what he reads, it, it's written big, so you can read it. <laughs> okay, this is Keone. This is part of Keone's script yesterday, and yes. Marsha feels this is a good expression of what you this, were, this, what you were this, engaged this, to say. Oh, this, right? is, this one, if it had eggs, they would have... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so uh, you, um, you have to realize that we're, we're really, uh, we who are 
going to now uh, form the republic are only doing it so that we become Americans later on. Okay, and we are Americans. All of us who do that are Americans right now. And so we start by saying Americans assemble here today amidst novel and serious events to make a new declaration of independence and, and of principles broader and wiser than the Declaration of 1776. We gather to make solemn declaration that the intelligent minority in every community have the inalienable right to good government, which they are justified in securing, holding themselves responsible only to God and their own consciences for the just and proper use in their uh, for the just and just and proper use of power in their hands. It's very interesting. Keep going. No, we can't. We can't spend all time. Oh, no, no, no. There's, there's some salacious parts in this one. Of course there are. There's salacious parts all the way through, Marsha. And, and we, you know, what I want to get at is the, the devices that these guys used in order to fool the public. Because those devices, you know, arguably are still in play at the national level right now. Mm -hmm. now for example, they wanted to suppress the vote. They did. And they did. These guys suppressed the vote. A small group of, quote, Americans, end quote, some of whom had been born in Hawaii. Oh, right? Most of these most guys. Of them born in Hawaii. Yeah. And, and had somehow insinuated themselves into the power structure in business and within the monarchy, too. Yes. Uh, and, they, and they made a plan. They did a lot of backroom discussion. And they came up with some concepts, like the thing about, um, you know, independence. It's not really independence at all. They were trying to undo the monarchy. They are trying right. to wrest control of it. Uh, and, um, you know, the thing about uh, suppressing votes... Uh, suppressing the ability of Native Hawaiians to run for office, uh, all kinds of well, things. When they said about suppressing the vote, we think of it today as, well, not enough places to vote. But they made it clear in the speech that it was for Anglo-Saxons and Teutonic descendants. Which yeah, was, the intel intelligent minority. And they were the That's minority. another way of being racist. Yeah, yeah they were the minority. <laughs> and then they used the... Uh, Thurston used the Constitution of Mississippi, the state of Mississippi, 1891. Well, you know what that was, because Mississippi didn't get around to cleaning it up till 1960. But so that was the basis for this, so that they were totally in control. They did, said they decided not to have an election. We'll just name Dole as the president. Yeah, he was acclaimed. Knew, we, there was knew, no election yeah, in no uh, uh, Sanford yeah. Dole. They knew they couldn't. But, the, the, but in, inherent in the script, I mean, we can find little pieces here and there that will show the, you know, the lack of candor, the hubris involved, um, where they said, how can we fool the people? Mm -hmm. We'll tell the people it's a republic, and that will make them think that it's a democratic republic. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll tell the people they will, have, you know, they will have the franchise, but we won't give them the franchise. Uh, and it was all this, all this poppycock. Uh, where they generated statements that were untrue and promulgated, pro you know, uh, published those statements to the people, and the people regrettably bought some of that, or at least the press did. And at the, the end of the that, day... Okay, well, you've got to realize there are two different kinds of people here. Yeah. There were the Native Hawaiians, and then there was the white community. Okay. And so there were people in the white community that bought this kind of thing. Yeah. Hawaiians didn't buy a bit. You know? And the other thing, Jay, is you've got to realize that all of this was sugar and money and 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 trying to become a part of america was because it was business and and we need our sugar project uh, protected uh, the after the missionaries came they had children these are the children uh, they grow up they go to college on the on the mainland you know they're, they're big schools and they come back and they're really somebody and mm -hmm. and and then by that time they start to buy up all of the land and lease all the land and so forth and, and build sugar companies and, and others get into the newspaper, like Thurston and so forth. And, uh, and after a while, uh, they, they, they realize they need to tie themselves to America more closely. But this is exactly at the time that America wants to take us over, because they're, they're planning and the manifest, manifest destiny, destiny. They're, they're, uh, related to the Spanish-American War. And, yeah. But even before that, with the Civil War, when the sugar and cotton uh, when they were, you know, the slaves were in became the became profitable industry. Then they needed Hawaii because of sugar and cotton. Yeah. And so 
the economy of Hawaii really advanced during the war because of what it did to the southern states. Okay, so, so we, coalescing know, on all of that, it seems to me, and, and looking at the play that happened yesterday, the question is, where was the monarchy when this was happening? Did they not, uh, don't answer yet, they did, not see, did they not see this coming? Yes. Um, did they, you know, could, could they have done a better job at preventing what amounted to a political coup? And right after this break, Marsha, okay. we're going to get into that. You guys yeah. can tell yeah. me the answers. Okay, we'll be right back after this break. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I'm the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at, from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at 1 o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. We're back. We're referring to uh, the play. Uh, Marsha was the producer, or one of the producers of the play yesterday on the Iolani uh, Palace Steps. He only was one of the players, and I was, I had one line. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> she made me do it. Anyway, <laughs> I can never run for public office again. <laughs> I never ran public office in the first place, so it doesn't make too much sense. So, in any event, so I want to get to you know the the actual engagement. I mean, we've discussed you know the uh, the back room quality, the cigar filled room quality of this. Um, we've we found that Americans were the holly guys, many of whom, if not most of whom, had been born in Hawaii anyway, uh, who had been given the sacred keys to join the the, the monarch monarchical court and be with the royalty and have information about how they operated, but, but here the monarchy was pretty, pretty sophisticated in those days. What happened? Okay, let's step, step way back. The Civil War, uh, Kamehameha IV uh, did not want to go in on the side of the Americans. He wanted to stay on the side with the South, not about slavery, but if the South won, he knew then that he could stand up to annexation. If, and he says this in his book, not this one, but another one, about his, so he had to, but the, the same people, the, the Haole elite is what they called them, were, wanted to go in on the side of the North because they wanted the, the United States to stay intact. That meant the economy would stay intact. So, so they were making so, bets on the result of the war. So he came in as neutral. Mm. So if you read the record, he is neutral in the war. Did that play a role in the overthrow? Yes. It was the same people. Mm -hmm. The sons, the grandsons, they're moving forward, but they managed to stay together to keep him from going in mm -hmm. on the other side. So I, I, what, I, so what I hear you saying is that although, as we know, you know, the monarchy was becoming global, becoming more sophisticated, more worldly. Um, I, I don't know how things were going with the, you know, with, with the guy in the street, but the monarchy was getting to be a, 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 a global power kind of a thing in those days. Well, people uh, came uh, here. Why couldn't they hold on to it? Why couldn't they deal with this, you know, uh, court intrigue? Uh, they didn't have intrigue? the guns. They didn't have the guns. The white people had guns. And so they were able to, uh, to force Palakawa. Uh, you know, the, the, the Honolulu rifles were able to, to, to push their, their way in. They were able to get the, the kinds of treaties that they wanted. They had the bayonet res, uh, the res, uh, at the revolution. Uh, you know, Palakawa could have had guns. No. He could have bought guns. He could have, but they killed him when he even got close. He was on a trip to, have, have you noticed, all of the, Kalakawas die mysteriously of some kind of strange ailment. 
Any, anything been documented? Anything been shown? No. No, they said I've got a had... suspicion that maybe, oh, maybe these it guys too were often, too, too assassinating yeah. the royalty. He goes to San Francisco, never comes back, you know. Mm. So he, he knew that he was going to be overthrown. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so he sent word to the, um, to the United States and asked for their help because um, they, we had treaties with them, you know, and, and that they, they had the obligation to, to defend him. And who he sent was... Um... <laughs> this, this referred to, to Keone's book. <laughs> yes. Uh, he sent the fellow named Carter, uh, and uh, Carter uh, gets there and says to the, the Secretary of State, Bayard, he says, um, well, the guys overthrowing him are our friends. And so the United States backed off and didn't do anything. The, the next thing we know, he's dead. And, and then we have the queen, you know. And she refers to him in her book, the queen's book, that what they did to my brother, she says, what they did to my brother is sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrament. anyway, bad. what she did, what they did to him. And she, she talks about all of those things. Mm -hmm. So the implication is they did they, away with him somehow. Yeah, and uh, the, the queen, uh, Capulani, knew what was going on. And she refused to speak English, even though she spoke, what, seven languages, something mm -hmm. like that. She refused to speak English because she knew what was going on. And that way they talked in front of her. But she refused. Oh, they knew. They could see it. They, they, they could see it. If we could go back now, I mean, I'm just curious, um, and advise them, say, 1860, 70, in there somewhere, how to, how to ward off a takeover, what would you tell them? Actually, they, they, had, they really thought this stuff out pretty well. Mm -hmm. it, when, when they landed the troops, you know, the queen could have engaged them, but she didn't, because if, if they landed the troops and were fought against and won, then they would have the spoils of war, it's a, the victory. There wouldn't be any way that Hawaii could say, uh, uh, we need our independence back, you know, be, but, but she was smart enough not to send her troops against them so that they could never say, you know, we, we won this place in war and it's our victory and it's ours. You know, so, so they were really pretty Akamai about uh, what needed to be done and what to do and not to do in various situations. Well, you, and you mentioned before that um, at the play yesterday and, and, and at the actual event in 1894, um, the people, the people um, didn't actively participate in it. They were more observers than actors. The actors were the ones on the steps of Iolani Palace. The actors were those Americans and the Committee of Safety and the royalty. Um, why didn't the people get involved? Did they have? Yeah. Did did they miss out on something? Were they held in ignorance somehow? No, no, they were upset. Um, and it talks about gangs roving the streets with guns and what have you. And part of what she had to do was damp that down. And the smartest thing, well, not the smartest, when she did, quote, surrender, she did to the United States of America, not to the provisional, the public safety, to the United States. And that forced the United States hand because I'm ceding power to you, not to them. And, you know, <clears throat> and that, that held off for a long time. Would you have advised her otherwise? Would you have advised her to use her troops now? No. If no. you could look at No. So you agree with what she did? Oh, yeah. But she yeah. set herself up, didn't she? Well, you know, you have to realize it was the United States all the way along. Uh, you played the part of James Blaine. He was the Secretary of State at the time. He and the, uh, the foreign minister here, the, uh, John Stevens, and they were the best of buddies. They had worked at, at a newspaper in uh, Maine Kenny Bunford. 30 years before. Mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, Blaine, as he rose in power, he would appoint John Stevens to various positions. It was all connected. Oh, yes. When they came, oh, yeah. and the overthrow was planned by the United uh, States. It had been ramping up a long time. Oh, yes. And uh, these guys were establishing relationships that sort of led inevitably to do what they wanted to do. But, you know, but <clears throat> it happened on July 4th, yes. and that's meaningful to me in the sense that 
you know, right now, these days, more than ever in my lifetime anyway, there are questions about the way the federal government works, um, about how effective it is and, and about how you know, vulnerable it is. And I think the play and the whole study of the events of 1893 to 1894, the overthrow itself, um, you know, leads us to examine just how vulnerable we are nationally now and the kinds of uh, demagoguery that could go on, that may be going on as we speak, that could lead to the erosion um, of our government and the taking of our country in the same way. Um, any thoughts about that, Marsha? Yes, exactly. When, a, when there's a, there are rules to coups, to a coup d'etat, there are rules, surprising. And one of the first things you do when you have a coup, you shut down the other side's communication. So, we you rehearse this, by the way. <laughs> so, so you know that the first thing they did, they, at that time there were 80 newspapers in Hawaii. 80! This was the most literate place in the world. 80 That's different right. language, I've heard that many times. Different language papers. The first thing they did is shut all of them down. All and of they, them. All of them. And the only paper was Thurston's paper in English. So you Is had, that like a war on the press, perhaps? Like the fake news? Yes. <laughs> exactly. You asked me that today. Sorry, we didn't rehearse this. No. Exactly. When there is a coup, the first thing you do is shut down the other side's communication. You control the communication, and that's what they did. So there were all these steps, and, and that's what the, the play gave me. I mean, it's like calling this a closer look right. at the overthrow. Um, and, I mean, I think it's instructive to study it, and I think you ought to, you know, go forward on that, and you ought to look further into it, and look further into Tom Kaufman's book, and for that matter, Keone's book, um, you know, and, and go into the detail, because it's, an ex it's a really interesting study of the sociology of, of government, and of the transitions of government, and how fragile government, and any particular government or form of government may be uh, in the times we live. So, Keone, were you, and I have, I think I have an answer to this, but were you emotionally affected by what was happening on the, uh, the palace steps yesterday? Yeah. I, I, yes, I was. You know, th th I just want to tell you one thing about yesterday uh, that, that, uh, the, and our reenactment that is really, really interesting. The queen was overthrown because she was going to give a new constitution. And, and they, they, they wanted to cut that possibility off. Yeah. They saw that as a threat. Yeah. They, thought, they thought that would be popular, so uh, instead, stop it. And she was going to proclaim the Constitution and put it into effect, and that's why they overthrew her. Yesterday's reenactment was a reenactment of them doing exactly the same thing. They promulgated their Constitution. It was not, not read by the people. It was not approved by the people. It was promulgated. So the same thing they overthrew the queen for is what they were is what they were doing yesterday. They were starting a republic uh, with a new constitution, and it had nobody voting for it, nobody approving it. Uh, that that ninety percent of the people of the Hawaiians and opposed to it. Uh, you know, we we had the Kuei petition at, at this time uh, that signed by three quarters of the Hawaiian people, sent to the Congress. I mean, you know, there were a lot of things that, uh, uh, the, the history is just so terribly interesting. It really is, it really is interesting. And the way that Hawaiians fought and fought and fought to, uh, 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 to try to save their nation. There are many lessons. Yeah. I mean, go beyond Hawaii, in my view. I mean, one of them is um, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. Eternal. It's you cannot be complacent. You cannot take anything for granted. You've got to protect what you have. If you like it, protect it. And that, that means... Don't be an observer, you know, be active about it. Well, so you get a chance to close, because you're a closer. <laughs> and we only have a minute left, okay. so close quickly. I call me a grain of sand. And you ask, why a grain of sand? With an oyster, you know, when the grain of sand gets in the oyster, the oyster begins to put this seal around it. And the more the sand grows, the more... The oyster take protect itself. The prettier it grows, the prettier it grows. So the world needs people like me, the irritant, to get under the skin to make a really beautiful 
world. Yeah. So that's what we did yesterday with Get okay, Under Your Skin. So we've learned two things here today uh, with Marsha Joyner <laughs> She's an and Keone Dudley. One is, if I may, um, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance, yes. and the other is Marsha is a very irritating person. Yes. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.